Hello and welcome. So, uh, one of the questions I see getting asked all the time is should someone get male or female rats? And we're going to be talking about that today. So, let's just get it right into it. Hi. <laughs> let's just get right into it. So, the first thing people will usually say is that males are cuddly and females are active. They're not cuddly. I've had 45 female rats and That is not my experience. <laughs> so males do tend to be a little bit lazier and I think that's why people associate it with cuddling, but a male just not walking away when you pet them isn't the same thing as being cuddly. <laughs> Females will seek you out, males will seek you out. It's just dependent upon the rat, their genetics, their personality. Some males will be active and nest and be busy little bees and some females will be super cuddly. So why so what factors should you look at when considering what kind of rats to get? What kind of, uh, what sex to get, I mean. So, um, let's start from the top. So let, assuming you're getting standard rats, size. So males tend to be a lot bigger. The average size of a female is 250 to 450 grams. The average size of a male, I believe, is like 450, no, no. The average size of a male, I think, is like 550 to like 750 or something like that, but they can get way bigger. And average doesn't mean you won't have some that are smaller, some that are bigger. They're, there's a wide breadth of sizes rats can come in. My smallest girl is, she hovers around like 280, and my biggest girl, which is Sailor, uh, hovers between 470 and 500. Sailor's a big girl, Orville's a tiny girl. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you want, if you like the thought of a, a big rat, males, hedge your bet, bets and go with males. That will mean you can't fit quite as many in a cage, but most people don't. The average mischief size is like six to seven, and I'd say six male rats will fit fine in a double critter nation. Seven might be pushing it. I consider my cage's limit to be seven females. So, you know, uh, the next thing to consider is energies because males are lazier, even neuter males. In fact, neuter males, I think are even lazier than intact males, but uh, they just, they don't have as much energy. Girls, you know, they, they forage more, they nest more, they mine run on their wheel, like wheels like crazy. So if you want a lazy rat, that's going to be easier to handle males. If you want a energetic, fun, chaotic rat, females. The other, another thing to consider is smell and how much they pee. <laughs> so males do have a tendency to smell way, way more. Um, in fact, that's one reason my, uh, one of my friends who has rats, she has males and females and she's not going to get any more males because they smell so much more and because, uh, they pee a lot more and she has allergic reactions to them because of that. So, uh, if you do have animal sensitivities, keep that in mind, uh, if possible, definitely before you even get rats, try to handle them to see if you're allergic to them or not. Uh, but yeah, so males will mark more factoring into them peeing more like females will pee on everything to get their smell on it too, but males do it more frequently. And that's part of the reason they smell more. They also are just a muskier rat, like a... You can have a perfectly litter trained male rat and if he's intact he will you will smell him before you get to the cage my girls do not smell at all but boys do <laughs> uh, my friend's little sister she had male rats and every time i held them it's like she put them in my hands and it would just be they would just unleash a river of urine onto me immediately and they did that to her too there are some sad experiences for her <laughs> in regards to that. Hi, baby. So they also have some behavioral differences. So starting with females, um, you'll notice they do, again, tend to have more energy. They'll nest more. Uh, they will hump each other when one is in heat. Uh, they also might be more active, so they might destroy things more frequently. They might, you know, get into stuff they shouldn't more frequently. But, and then males tend to have more aggression issues. 
So because in the wild it's a male's job to defend the mischief, like they tend to like battle it out a lot more where females are just like, whatever, you do you. <laughs> So you have a better chance of getting a male rat that's going to be hormonally aggressive. Like if you have male rats, it will happen at some point and the only solution is neutering. But if you've been here a while, you know that female rats are not immune to hormonal aggression. Looking at you. Oh, that's sad. I don't know if you heard her trying to climb, but um, she was a little bit clumsy right there. But yeah, so males do tend to be more aggressive. Their hierarchies are also different. So if you have a mischief of all males, you'll notice that they tend to do certain behaviors more often, like they'll pin each other more often. I've noticed they groom each other a lot more often. They box more often, like they establish and reestablish and reestablish their hierarchy constantly. Whereas with females, it's not that much of an issue. So you might have a uh, mischief females and no one's the alpha whereas if you have males someone is the alpha always like in my groups I'd, I'd say sailor's probably the alpha in this group I don't know who would be in this group at all like there is no clear dominant rat in the same with my group before there is no clear dominant rat and these are groups of females but if I had males, there would definitely be someone who is at the tippy top. So if you find that kind of thing interesting and you want to observe that in your mischief, then males would probably be the better way to go. But if you don't care about that and you don't want to deal with aggression quite as much, deal with neutering and all that comes with all that, females would probably be the way to go. The other thing about male rats. <laughs> so this falls into behavior as well. The, you don't get this with females. Like, females will hump each other when they're in heat, but it's it's just kind of to, like, relieve some of the stress, basically. Um, males will also occasionally, though, um, leave deposits on their brother's backs. So if you don't want to deal with that. <laughs> so one another difference is uh, their coat types. Certain coat types tend to look better on male rats than female rats, such as Rex. So a Rex coat will look curlier, fluffier on a male typically than a female. Obviously I have a couple of Rex girls right now who I feel look pretty decent for female Rexes. Uh, same is true with Silvermane is the silvering tends to pop up better on a male rat than a female rat and this is the case for a lot of different coat types. Um, I'm not sure why. I haven't done enough research in genetics to know why but that is that is the case. That's how it goes sometimes. So yeah, if you're looking for like fancy dancy breeder rats and their coat type matters to you, that's a factor. I personally don't care. <laughs> I, I love all my rats. I find things about them that are beautiful even if they're just like a, a boring variety. I don't believe in boring varieties personally. So another factor is how easy are they going to be to find. So this is going to be completely dependent upon your area. Some areas have a lot of breeders, a lot of rescues, a lot of what have you. In my area, there's a lot of backyard breeders, but not a lot of reputable breeders. And there's two dedicated rat rescues. But also, my chain pet stores do not carry rats, so all of the rats come from feeder bins. What this basically means is that female rats are a little bit harder to come by where I live. In some areas, the case might be reversed, but... Uh, yeah, the rescues tend to have males mostly. Breeders tend to keep more females than males. People tend to rehome males more often due to things like hormonal aggression, smell, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, and like obviously feeder bins, they tend to keep a lot of females too because they, they need the females to keep their business going. So if you want, if you don't particularly care, I would just look into what's more common in your area. Again, this might not be an issue for a lot of people. If the more breeders and more rescues you have, the more likely it will be to find what you want easier. And lastly, let's talk about health differences. This is probably the biggest factor for me and what you would want to choose. Now, I ended up with female rats because um, my mom saw male rats and said no. <laughs> she she couldn't handle it <laughs> so I that's why I have females and uh, I'm not particularly interested in switching to be perfectly honest I don't find I'm lacking anything with my females and the issues that come with female health 
I feel like isn't so significant that it's worth switching to males, which I'll get into in a second. But okay, so males, the most common thing you're gonna have to deal with health wise, and I do consider this a health issue, is hormonal aggression. So around six months old, male rats have a burst of hormones and that can make them aggressive. A lot of times their hormones will settle down and it won't be a big deal, but a lot of times it won't. And the only solution for them to live a happy, healthy, safe life and for you to safely keep them is to neuter them. Uh, and that costs money, obviously. <laughs> and then they have to be separated six to eight weeks for the hormones to calm down. It can be a very stressful time for them. It's not very fun. I don't like behavioral issues like that, like the aggression. If they don't like me, I don't care, but I want them to be able to live a happy life with other rats at the very least. And when they're aggressive, you can't do that until you get them neutered and then wait the eight weeks. And it's just, it makes me sad when they're separated. <laughs> Uh, and then the other thing with male rats is they tend to get things like kidney failure and HLD more often. HLD is hind leg degeneration. It's where for whatever reason, the back legs just go paralyzed and it kind of creeps up the body. And this can be linked to kidney disease. I've, I've heard it linked to it. I've also seen it said that it's like a anecdotal link. We don't really know if there is a link, but yeah. So, and they also, because they're larger, they tend to get other organ failures more often, such as heart failure. But on the flip side of that, there's females who have a lot of reproductive issues. You'd be surprised how often you have to actually spay a female. So they get mammary gland tumors more often than males. Males can still get them, just like females can still get kidney failure and HLD and heart failure. But it's less common in females than males, and males are less likely to get mammary gland tumors than females. Females can get them pretty much at any age. It's typically around a year and a half that's gonna crop up, but it can happen earlier. I've I've gotten it pretty early. I've gotten it like around a year old. My friend had one who got a mammary gland tumor at 11 months old. Genetics are the biggest factor in that, to be perfectly honest. So like, if you wanna go with a rescue, it's more likely to happen. And then females also get something called pyometra, which is where uh, the uterus becomes infected and they start bleeding from the vagina. Obviously males can't get this, they don't have vagina, or they don't have uteruses. The only solution for that is a spay. And then obviously also females can get pregnant, which happens a lot is people get rats from pet stores or backyard breeders and they either come pregnant or they put them in with their males not realizing they're females and then Babies. Babies everywhere. A lot of people, I've seen a lot of people, and this is gonna be where, why it's not really a factor for me, is like either I'm neutering for hormonal aggression or I'm dealing with tumors. So, in pyometra. And other, the, a lot of things can go wrong with the uterus. Those are just a couple of examples. Rat uteruses are not built to last. But, you can spay your females around six months old to help prevent these kinds of things. In my opinion, it might be worth it, it might not be worth it. It's really just up to you. You're not a bad owner if you do it, you're not a bad owner if you don't do it. It's just, it's a risk to put a rat under anesthesia. But I do find personally that I have noticed it does a lot of benefits with my rats to spay them before they have an issue with tumors. So there is that. But I do find, I've seen a lot of people who decide to switch from females to males because of the tumors, and then almost immediately one of their male rats ends up with a tumor. <laughs> Which is why for me, it's just like, if it's not one thing, it's gonna be another thing. That's why I've stuck with females this whole time. That and I like them. I like the chaos. I like that they, you know, in the midst of playing, they're just like, oh yeah, mom's here, I'm gonna go cuddle them. I like the, the silliness. And also, every male rat I've ever dealt with has just been a little bit moody. <laughs> That's just personal experience. Your experience with rats is going to be different. Don't take my word on what you should or should not get. I'm just presenting the facts. I like female rats because they are silly. I, I like their group dynamics. I like that they're less likely to become aggressive. And if they do become aggressive, you can spay them. Like, I've only had one female rat get so aggressive that it was like a change in my mischief and that was Sailor. Who's somewhere in here. 
haven't come to say hi to me. I'm a little offended. But yeah, I, I like my females. Um, like I said, one of my friends is going to stick with females because of the smell. My other friend never wanted males to begin with. Partially because of the smell and I think partially because she was just used to females because I've always had them. So yeah, uh, there, but there's not a significant difference between life expectancies. Again, rats are just very prone to illnesses anyway, which is why for me the, the tumors aren't necessarily a factor. It can be frustrating, it can be heartbreaking, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> If you want rats, there's things that come with it that are just kind of suck. So yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, you know what to do. All the good stuff down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!